everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. So far when I've talked about the upcoming Wheel of Time TV show, we've talked about what we do know as some news has been coming out and it's been pretty exciting. In today's video, I'll be breaking down the seven biggest things that we still don't know about the upcoming TV show. I wanted to take a minute to thank everyone who participated in the contest uh, to get on to Wheel of Time Jeopardy and donated money to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. We've raised just shy of $2,000 so far here on the channel, and I couldn't be more proud of the community and the way you all showed up to help grant some wishes to critically ill children. It's really amazing and I'm pumped. But we aren't done yet. The goal we set from the beginning on the channel was to raise $5,000, and we have a bit over two months now to raise that money. I'd like to challenge all of you to donate $5. On average, right now, my videos get around seven to 8,000 views. If literally 10% of you donated just $5, we would shatter the goal this week. Thanks again to everyone who has supported Make-A-Wish and those of you that are willing to help out and help us get to our goal. You can donate to Make-A-Wish by following the link in the description below. If you feel it in your heart, please pause the video and take five minutes. You can make a difference in a sick child's life and I would very much appreciate it. So let's throw up a spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, but this time around with spoilers just through The Great Hunt. If you haven't finished the first two books of The Wheel of Time, watch at your own risk. So with all of the excitement about what information has been released about the show, I thought we could take a few minutes and examine what we still don't know about the upcoming Wheel of Time TV show. So here are my top seven things that we still need to know in no particular order. Set design. The Wheel of Time TV show is actually in production right now, with primary filming taking place in Prague in the Czech Republic. One of the things that we still haven't seen, but I am super excited to get a taste of, are the sets and costumes that are being designed for the show. The overall aesthetic of a TV show can be hugely influenced by the detail that is put into the set design. Part of what makes a show like Rome on HBO or Game of Thrones on HBO uh, what made them successful was the attention to detail they paid on their sets. A huge majority of their budget went to the detail and design of those sets. Some big questions here are whether they will be building complete sets for the various locations. For instance, will we get a Two Rivers set that will be used over and over? Much of Game of Thrones filming actually existed using existing structures in the UK, and other locations, and then they modified their appearance over and over again. Uh, for instance, they used a building in Game of Thrones from like seven different angles uh, in seven different scenes. Will they be doing that with the Wheel of Time, or will they be building sets from scratch? I'm curious what kind of historical periods the showrunners will use to base their design choices off of. If we can take any speculation, it's from the choice of Prague as the location for primary filming. We can only assume that the historical architecture of the city will be used in the production, and that's kind of the overall theme they're going to take. One thing I know for sure, the level of detail in the set design is going to be indicative of the success of the show. I know that seems like a bold statement, but a world like Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time has great depth and history, and to really be able to pull off the world building necessary to make this show a success, they're gonna need to reflect the culture and the lived in feel, um, so I'm very much anxiously awaiting for the first pictures of the sets. Costume design. So in the same thinking about set design, costume design is another area that will set the tone for the series. Do they go with authentic looking costume design that makes the characters look gritty? Or do they design costumes that simply make the characters look good? One of the areas that Robert Jordan is known for in his writing, both good and bad, uh, is his attention to detail, specifically how the characters were dressed and the look of their clothing. Will the costume design team take these descriptions and make the costumes authentic, or will they go with a different vision? In some fantasy adaptations, for instance, the Shannara Chronicles, the costumes were designed to be tight-fitting and simply look good. Uh, not so much a gritty, realistic take on the source material and the situations that the characters found themselves in, but more of a way to make the already good looking characters look better. This will happen to an extent because we kind of want the costumes to look good, but hopefully not at the cost of detail and authenticity to the books. The head costume designer for the show is Isis Mussenden, a well-known costume designer with other fantasy adaptations to her name, as well as some gritty dramas. Let's hope she nails it. Makeup and visual effects. So the makeup and visual effects for a fantasy series like The Wheel of Time might be one of the most important pieces in my opinion. Cheesy visuals and special effects can absolutely kill a series 
series for new viewers and can keep non-fantasy fans from wanting to watch the show, which will essentially doom the show long term. The Wheel of Time is going to have to attract non-fantasy fans to survive through its whole run. You don't need to look much further than the Shannara Chronicles to see this in action. The visual effects were clunky and cheesy, and the makeup and CGI looked fake. There are a number of non-human entities within the Wheel of Time, specifically the Shadow Spawn, that need to look menacing, scary, and horrific. There are times that the Wheel of Time feels like a horror novel. If a Trolloc or Murdral can't look horrific or fear-inducing, then the show will likely not make it, frankly. This goes for how they portray channeling as well. Magic has to look believable and real and not look cheap. The good news is, although we don't have any actual pictures or snapshots of the CGI or special effects yet, there is very good reason to be hopeful here. The makeup effects designer for the Wheel of Time is Nick Dudman. He is most known in his past for work on the Harry Potter franchise, where he oversaw the development of the makeup and animatronic creatures for the series. He designed the Goblins and Basilisk, for instance. He had Oscar nominations for his work, and he is very highly respected. But his work on Harry Potter is not what has me excited. He recently oversaw the makeup effects for Carnival Row, a new Amazon fantasy series. He played the same role there that he will play with The Wheel of Time, and I have to say, after watching Carnival Row, I am very, very excited for the way they will bring Shadowspawn and Ogier to life. Being an Amazon show, this gives us a glimpse into how Amazon will produce a fantasy show. It's such high quality from a production standpoint, I'm kind of excited. Carnival Row has a huge number of fantasy creatures, and the makeup work was outstanding. So despite not having actual pictures or releases to go off for The Wheel of Time, we have very good reason to be excited here. So before hitting our number four, I do want to take a quick moment and not only thank my channel's main sponsor, but also give you all a cool offer. Audible.com is the largest depository of audiobooks in the world, and they have a really cool monthly service where you can get an audiobook at a very low cost each month for a membership. The offer is real simple, though. They're going to let you try the service for free, download a couple audiobooks that you can keep, and even if you don't want to keep their service after you try them, you can still keep the books. And you are really helping out the channel by doing so as they support what I'm doing. So you can help the channel and it costs you nothing and you get a free book. It's a good time to pick up the Wheel of Time series again and the audiobooks for the Wheel of Time are pretty much universally loved. Kate Redding and Michael Kramer do an awesome job. For sure, check it out. Just head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and sign up for your free trial today. Let me know what you all think. So let's get back to the list. Budget. So all the stuff I've hit on so far is pretty dependent on this, and we haven't heard anything about the budget for the Wheel of Time TV show yet. It would be nice to get an idea of how much money Amazon is going to throw at this, but I doubt we will get those numbers until the show actually releases. So what should we expect, though? I'll say this. If you want a big budget production, which I think is something that we all want, there is no better place right now than Amazon. There is almost nothing they have produced in the last few years that has not received a massive budget. Based on my research, most episodes produced by Amazon Studios are getting between eight and ten million dollars per episode. Compare this to the six million that Game of Thrones got for its first few seasons and you can see they're spending some money. Frankly I've seen a lot of people that thought that they that they would want to see this on Netflix and Netflix is actually very cheap with its original content. Like I said, Amazon is the place to be. Amazon has been opening the checkbook on fantasy series as well, making a clear move to dominate the space. From Carnival Row, which has a massive budget and has already been picked up for a second season, The Lord of the Rings shows, and even modern thrillers like The Jack Ryan Show, they are sparing no expense to bring very high quality content to viewers. Although we don't have exact budget numbers, we can assume based on Amazon's history, as well as the big name directors and production designers that they have brought in for the Wheel of Time show, that it should have a massive budget, but only time will tell. Length of the season. Another major question mark facing the show is the number of episodes it will have per season. We still don't know how many episodes they're going to be in the first season, and that very much impacts how the first books will be adapted. Rafe released episode titles for five episodes earlier this year, giving us titles for the first four episodes and then an episode six title. The titles we were given suggest that the first two books will be adapted into the first season, but I would be very careful with any assumptions there simply because they can play games with the titles and they might be a bit misleading. But this does leave us with a big question. Will two seasons be compacted into eight or ten episodes? Will we get more episodes than that for the first season? If other Amazon shows are any guide, I think we are going to get between eight and ten episodes in the first season. This tends to be the norm with their shows, specifically their higher budget shows, but again, 
We're going to have to wait and find out. Changes to the story. So knowing the number of episodes would also give us a bit more insight into how the story is going to be adapted. To anyone who has familiarity with television and its production, it's fairly clear that some things are going to need to be changed or altered to better tell the story in a different medium. What we really don't know yet is what any of these changes are going to be specifically. We have hints from Rafe and the showrunners about some of the things that might be changed, but we have no concrete information. Brandon Sanderson is on record as saying that he has read the scripts and that there are certainly going to be some changes to the story, but that he loves the changes that have been made that he's read. I do believe I can guess as to some of the changes simply by taking a look at the story in general and comparing it to Game of Thrones. For instance, Game of Thrones basically took the first season, was the first book in the series. Most fantasy adaptations that have been successful use their large ensemble casts and bounce from storyline to storyline till they bring them together in a climax. They're in different locales and different plots and they're all running simultaneously and then they come together. Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire essentially was written that way. The Wheel of Time, however, doesn't really do that until book three on. It does it very well at that point, but up until then, we're really following the same set of characters in the books. The problem is is, is that the eye of the world and that most of the great hunt follow the same cast of characters on the same journey even though they get separated onto different paths to Camelin, for instance, they really are following the same plot line. One of the major adaptations that can be made is the introduction of some of the other characters early on in some of their story. For instance, we've heard that Loghain's role might be expanded upon. Perhaps in the first season, we'll see more of his conquests in Gildon, or his capture and gentling by the Aes Sedai. We could see what's going on in other areas of the world at the same time that our, as our characters make their way to the Eye of the World, if indeed that even stays in the story. Again, I am simply speculating, but the point is we really don't know anything about how the books will be adapted other than it will be an adaptation, not a word-for-word -word recreation. It is important to know that there will be changes, and that's okay. If you don't like one of the changes up front, you're always going to have the book to go back to. I encourage everyone to take the television adaptation for what it is and something entirely separate from the books. I am simply happy that the TV show has revived interest in the series and will be bringing hopefully millions of new fans to my favorite book series. Casting. Lastly, the other big questions we still have facing the show are the casting choices for some of the minor and major characters that we still have not heard from. For instance, Tam Al Thor, Padon Fane, Ishamael, Morghese, Elaine, Min, Baildoman, the Bornholds, Elias Machira, and most importantly, Tom Marilyn. The fact that we don't have public announcements for these castings and that they have started principal filming already has led many to speculate, are they cutting Tom Marilyn? There was a blog post on Dragon Mount about the topic. I've seen discussion on my Discord server and a general fear that some of our favorite characters might be cut from the show. And while I can't tell you for certain that any of them will not be cut, it is entirely possible, I don't believe that this is the case. For one, the show just started filming and will likely not be done filming until May of 2020. And most likely we're looking at a 2021 release. So because of this, they're going to spread out the hype train over some time here. They have been releasing new information about the show on the first Wednesday of each month, and I expect this to continue. We will be getting more casting announcements, pictures from the production, and general information as the show continues filming. I know for many of us fans, we want to know it all now. I caution patience. These things move slowly, but I can say that I will be anxiously awaiting more announcements about the casting. So what are the biggest questions that you have for the upcoming TV show? What are you most anxious about and what has you the most excited? Please let me know in the comments below. Go ahead and give the video a like if you liked it and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Wheel of Time content. My channel is Wheel of Time all the time and I have some exciting announcements about the future of the channel and some projects that I have in the works that will be coming up in some upcoming videos. If you want to support what I'm doing here, please consider taking a look at my Patreon page as that really is the best way you can support me. Also, check out the Audible trial link down below to get your free audiobook. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, peace out. Think you're in the kitchen with a job of work to do. A mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?